All right. Welcome to another episode of ERG TV. I'm Kevin Gardy, the Chief Visionary Officer for Enlightened Realty Group, Wisconsin. We have I'm excited today. We got a great guest today. His name's Logan Lindstrom. I refer to him as Logie Baby. Can I still call you that? Whatever you want. All it's right. Your show. He was nice enough to drive down this morning from Chicago to be with us. It's been a while since we hooked up, and it's yes. just great to see your face again. You always, whenever I see you, um, you probably don't know this, but you motivate people because you have a lot going on. And we, you know, even though we don't see you every day, we know you have a lot going on and you give back to people around you. So it's awesome to connect with you again. I appreciate that. It has been a while, Kevin. It is. Uh, hey, so, I, real quick, I like that title, Chief Visionary Officer. Yes. Love that. I, I, uh, that's my goal, to create the vision for the team. You know, in on Enlightened Realty Group, I started a team probably spring this year, 2023. I, I'll be honest, I wasn't crazy about the idea of starting a team. I was comfortable being an individual. I was on a team for three years before that. I was the regional director. I was in charge of, oh gosh, probably about nine or 10 states. And I just I just enjoyed being an individual agent, but the demand was there. People were coming up to me like, we wanna, you should start a team. We'd like to be on it. Um, and then the next thing you know, we were starting a team. And then as we speak now, the team, we have eight team members on there. Eight? Eight. Okay. And 2023 was good. It was, uh, we have a lot of newer agents, mm -hmm. so a lot of teaching, a lot of leading, a lot of coaching, but I enjoy that. Is right? that the main role you're taking on is you're not just leading the team, but you're helping them grow in their personal development and their personal education and just trying to sharpen their swords as well? Correct. So it's not uncommon for me still at this point to attend buyer agency appointments. So they know what they're talking yep. about. I kind of take the lead. They listen and learn. Um, I've been on listing appointments. So if they set the appointment where I'm going to the house and I'm making sure they get it signed and they're leaving with a signed contract. Right. So and I enjoy that stuff. It's fun to watch people grow and um, because they raise their hand. They like I want a significant business in real estate. And I said, OK, I'm going to provide everything you need. We're going to have the coaching, the training, the leverage and the tools and systems that you need to succeed. So that's my daily goal for them. And you're doing a great job for what it sounds like. Thank like, you. Like you said, I haven't, we haven't seen each other in a while, but uh, I've, I've been following and seeing the growth that you've had and it's it's been it's been good. There's, there's been a lot of it and you're busy, you're out there, you're helping other people, you've, you've amped up the marketing, you're starting to pour back into not only your business, but also the other people around you. And uh, there's there's a lot of growth that I saw happen in that part of 2023, and I'm glad you took that jump because I remember when we met you, when I met you right we were working together when I was in the mortgage business right you were on your own right and you were crushing it you were killing it but you didn't seem like you were just completely fulfilled right and I feel like that this is something that you were you know kind of on the fence about and and uh, that's a good thing right because the greatest things right. come from going into what's uncomfortable and as soon as you get in there you start to realize how beautiful it can be and I can tell that you've uh, starting that team and helping these other people, it's 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 definitely made you happier and yeah. more fulfilled. And and it that's is. cool to see. And 2024 is going to be epic. I know it's going to be huge. Just from off camera, we were talking about right. uh, a lot of exciting stuff that you had coming up. And uh, I know it's just going to attract more people into your uh, organization and it's, it's just going to flourish. So very excited for 2024. Absolutely. Um, Speaking of the years, 2023, you had a lot of go things going on in 2023. Um, you switched from lending, right? Yeah, I moved out of uh, residential mortgage lending. I did you had your for... own business, which was impressive. And really, I just want to throw this out there before we get too far. It's like, I remember meeting you and meeting Evan, and you guys were like, what, 19 or 20? <laughs> we were young. Yes. I'm like, who are these <laughs> kids rolling around in Tesla's? having multiple businesses <laughs> and I was impressed and Evan Dittmar, you know, he was, he was like your, your main guy with the mortgage yep. business. And I, when I met him, he invited me to coffee uh, cause he wanted to do business with our team for the mortgage. And he had done like 19 flips at the time. And, you know, you had an impressive resume. You started doing things when what you were like 15, you're on your own <laughs> business. So 
Because I can tell you, when I was your age, I was not doing that. I'm not even going to get into what I was doing at the time. <laughs> uh, but it's it was impressive to me that you guys, you know, you had a vision and you were so young. You weren't even drinking age yet, but yet you were accomplishing all these goals. So it's that, just maximizing life, right? Just seeing what you can do and just keep on going. Not everything works out the way you planned it to and the way right. that you hope in the way that everybody else hopes it works for you or right. do they, well, they, they, what they don't want to work for you, right? But at the end of the day, it's all about just having fun, taking care of people and enjoying life because life's so short mm -hmm. and why not? Why not just try things and see what can come from it? That's and right. I've always done that and that's that's carried me to a few different industries and in my career so far, even at a young age. And uh, like, like you mentioned this year, I transitioned, um, I've been in uh, the commercial real estate space. I was trying to find a way that I could actually build wealth for myself for long term, right. not just thinking about, okay, how do I get that paycheck and survive the next six months of the year? I wanted to try to build a foundation that I uh, building and creating for 20, 30, 40 years down the road. Right. And I, the, I everything I've always done, no matter if it was landscaping business, marketing business, uh, mortgage, even real estate now, I've always had a mentor, right? Kind of like how you're mentoring the people on your team. Mm -hmm. I can't stress enough how important that is because- you don't, we don't know things, right? How do, how do we learn things from other people, right? right? And a big thing that I always talk about is, okay, if, if, if what we want as individuals and as people, we have all these wants and needs, where do those wants come from? Mainly from seeing what other people have done and accomplished. So I just did a, uh, I did a speaking engagement in Milwaukee a few months ago and I asked the audience a question. The question was, how many people have a mentor? Raise your hand. And only about three people raised their hand in an audience of 120, 130. Wow. And I was like, okay, so if you know that other people have exactly what you're trying to accomplish and they know how to do that, why would you not have a mentor, right? Right. So I always push people, like, find somebody who knows what they're doing and, and they don't have to be perfect. They're not going to be perfect and learn from them, right? And you're doing that for a lot of people. And that's what I've always done in all these different business ventures and avenues that I've done is because I don't know, right? And I'm, I'm always learning. I'm a, we're a lifetime student. Right. Uh, so the past year, I, I've been in commercial real estate. I found a mentor, and we've just been uh, uh, focusing on the commercial real estate path. But on on top of that, and kind of something that ties in is the residential side, and that's okay. what you're focused on. Right. And the residential side of real estate investing is an amazing, amazing path to start building wealth and creating uh, income for yourself and your family. And that's what you help a lot of people with. Right. It's the easiest and fastest way to build wealth. Yes. Right. Uh, there's even ways to get in it without investing money. Yes. Right. If you're creative and you get into that, um, the whole mentor thing, you're right. I think, I don't know what it is. Either people don't know, or they think they're, maybe they're too proud or they think they're further than they really are to, they're like, I don't need a mentor. Yeah. I got this. Starts with them. Right. Where every successful person I know in this business has a coach or a mentor. Most of them have coaches. Like when you think of Gary Keller, you're like, who could coach that guy, right? He he's right. he knows everything, <laughs> right? But he's got a coach. I don't know who it is, but he's got one. somebody, <laughs> right? So there's someone always higher. Even like John Maxwell, um, yeah. you know, my uh, one of my mentors, Kristen Cole, she's good friends with him now. She's built a relationship. He's her mentor, and they do golf and they do charity stuff. Yeah. Even John Maxwell has a mentor out there. So to take it to the next level, I 100% agree with you. You need to be in coaching or some type of mentoring relationship. And one thing that I would recommend when searching for a mentor, if you're somebody who's trying to get out there and, and learn that new skill or build a new business is when you find that mentor, don't just go in and ask. And I, I hear this a lot from people, especially who've seen uh, quite a bit of success is they hate when people just come up and ask, how can I provide value? Okay. Like they just, they don't like it. Like every, so many people are doing that to them. They don't like just being asked, how can I provide value? So what I recommend is when you go to somebody or when you're trying to uh, uh, be in that mentee position, right? When you have a mentor, they've accomplished a certain amount of things. Obviously, that's what you're trying to learn from them, okay? You haven't done that yet. They know how to do everything that they've accomplished. So what I recommend is taking a look at the, their entire organization, their business, uh, whatever they're working on, and try to use what they've built, use their resources, use their connections, and help them get to that next level, okay? Right. And if you do that, now you're kind of on a more even playing field with them because you're on, you're with them trying to level them up. 
they're going to help get you to where they are right now, right? They've done that. They know how to do that. So by you using their resources to help lift them up, to get them, uh, uh, to help get them to a higher place in their business, they're going to get you to where they are. Right. So can you kind of see how it's an automatic they're just going to keep pulling you up and you're going to help me and them up. And it's kind of a hack, right? right. If, you're, if you don't know anything, you don't have the knowledge of the skills, you go in there, you can use and leverage other people's resources and the skills and their lessons that they've had to help them. Like you have a whole toolbox. Right. So it's a winning situation. Absolutely. So I definitely recommend seeking out mentorship in all sorts of forms. There's coaching. There's, there's all types of stuff. But I, I highly recommend that. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been always taught to look at what successful people are doing and go do it. Yes. Right? Find them. It's not, I mean, it's, people overcomplicate things sometimes. If you, you know, you just have to look at the successful people, uh, especially in the real estate business. It's like a rip off and duplicate, right? Yeah. If you like how somebody markets, is doing their marketing, duplicate it. It's, it's not copywritten and, right. and most people share what they're doing. You know, Keller Williams is fortunately a culture where the biggest producers share what they do. Uh, we have Ignite coming up. I don't know if you've ever taken Ignite or not, but that's coming up. It's 12 weeks and it has some of the biggest producers in our, in our market center here, giving back a whole day of their time to teach people how they grew their business and what it takes to be successful. So there's people out there willing to do it. You just have to show up and ask. Absolutely. And we talked and we obviously keep saying that, you know, real estate's the way to build wealth. through real estate's the way to grow your career and yourself. But a lot of people struggle with kind of taking those first steps and getting into it. Right. And even a lot of people who are in real estate um, in whatever facet that may be as a career, they still struggle to invest for themselves. Why, right. why do you think that is? I think the, I hate to say it, but a lot of people show up to do real estate and I hear it all the time. Like, oh, I want to be my own boss. I want to be my own, do my own schedule. I'm like, okay, but you know, this is actual work, right? Uh, you have to show up. You have to be disciplined. We're in a lead generation business, right? We're not in a sales business. Everybody thinks it's selling. It's not selling. It's a relationship business and a lead generation business, right? Like you couldn't pay me enough money to go. So I hate to say it, but I I would never be like a car salesman or I don't want to go sell insurance. Yeah. I'm not a sales guy. I'm a relationship guy and I build relationships and take care of people with their biggest assets. Um, so, you know, you have to show up in this business like it's a job. It's just not a job where you sit at home in your pajamas and all of a sudden people come to you to sell their house. Right. right? And I Re see that Real estate is not passive. <laughs> it's not. You have to put in the work. Um, and speaking of that, you know, this was a tough 2023 uh, will go on record as a tough year. This is a year that the market shifted with the rising interest rates, um, the economy, you name it. It was challenging for mortgage people. It was challenging for us, the realtors. And a lot of people didn't make it. Uh, you know, at the beginning of 2023, I remember having coaching and mentoring say, you got to be able to weather this storm. They were yeah. predicting a storm. While it wasn't like a recession, it wasn't a great uh, environment to be selling and selling houses because people had such great interest rates, yeah. right? They they didn't want to leave a 2 or 3% right. interest rate to go move somewhere. Um, so if you didn't weather the storm, meaning save money and be smart with your assets, some people didn't make it. And they're predicting over 100,000 Realtors this year will leave the business nationwide. Sounds and like I a heard recess. This, <laughs> right. And I heard the same similar story about mortgage lenders because if we're down, they're down. Yep. Right. Are you hearing the same kind of Absolutely. Stuff? Now see it. Even people that I've built relationships over the past three, four years, I've seen them exit the business. And it's surprising, right? Because, right. you know, perception is reality. And when you see what you see online is not always the case. Um, right. and a lot of times I think a lot of the people who did exit the industry, they had egos where they were too scared to ask for help. They were too scared to go to people like you and join a team to get that support. Right. They were too nervous and uh, cared so much about what uh, the outside world thought of them that they literally self-destructed and it's unfortunate. And I, I do think on the other side of that, there's still a lot of people who may be in that spot, but they still have time and that possibility to join somebody like you right. or to find a team that can help support them. And um, 
it's it's yeah it's been a very interesting transition to watch from outside in absolutely so while it's sad to see i mean i guess it's part of what happens and it goes back to what we were saying you have to be in the right brokerage right i see a lot of people you can't fail real estate you can only quit meaning if you don't do your activities and do what you're supposed to do you'll fail Mm -hmm. and you'll leave the business and if you're at the wrong place i bring a lot of people from different brokerages i have Gosh, I over almost 60 people underneath me now at Keller Williams, whether they were new to the business or just in the wrong environment. You know, I had a, I'm not going to put any names out there, but we had this um, nice um, girl. She joined us at KW probably three weeks ago. And she came in and she told, I, I met with her like three days after she had joined. And there was a few classes she went to. And she went to um, our, our accelerator class. So when new agents come, they put them yep. in an accelerator class. And she said, uh, she's like, gosh, Kevin, I've learned more in two days here than I did the last three years where I was. So you got to make sure you're around the right people. It goes back to that again, to be successful in this business. You can be happy somewhere, meaning you like the people you're with, but are you getting what you need? There's a difference between liking where you're at and getting what you need to have a significant business. Right. And do you think that sometimes it's not only the, what that firm can provide, but it's also who can help get their mindset to mindset to shift, to make them want to learn and to become the student. Right. Cause I feel like a lot of, a lot of different places, there's obviously pros and cons to each place, but at the end of the day, it comes down to the individual and who can help take you out of your shell who can help motivate you and inspire you to take the initiative to learn right because all the information is out there right it's all out there it's all available the the how to win is there it's all starts from uh from within right so i think that having the people like yourself and others who um can help people change their mindsets to just get them excited to learn those people are, are winners absolutely so 2023 I'm kind of glad to see it go, (laughs) to be honest with you. What are you looking forward to most in 2024? I love creating opportunity. And I think that even coming out of years that uh, a lot of people struggled through, there's always ways to create opportunity, not only for yourself, but for other people. Mm -hmm. And I think that in 2024, there's going to be a lot of people searching for those opportunities. Right. And I think that uh, people like ourselves can be pillars to create opportunities for other people who were struggling or maybe are struggling to help lead them on greater paths. Mm -hmm. And that's something that excites me. And um, I I, kind of look at plans as five, 10, 15, 20 year visions and plans. It's hard. I try not to go year by year, month by month, week by week, just because you can get so caught up in the details. Right. Um, When you plan ahead, Mm -hmm. plan far down the road, I tend to find out that a lot of little stuff in between just works itself out. Not to say that it's always right or that always happens how I want it to, but at the end of the day, time goes by and it works itself out. But (laughs) I'm, I'm very excited for 2024. What do you, what are you looking forward to? Well, I want to ask you something about that before you go, because okay. I'm the same way. I like to at least go a year out. Like, yep. you know, you had a 5, 10, 15. So if you have a five-year plan, do you find yourself, all right, this is where I want to be in five years. Do you break it down then by the year and then by the month and then by the week and then have your activities? Or how do you make sure you stay on track for your five-year plan? Of course. I think it depends on it depends on what goals you're you're calculating, right? Is it income? Is it, is it assets? Is it time freedom? Is it families and relationships and friendships? Right. What are you trying to calculate? And I think depending on what you're looking for, uh, yes, you would break it down. And I break it down too. Like, for example, if it's income, yeah, I look at my five year where I want to be, mm-hmm. but then I work the numbers backwards, make it simple and know what I have to shoot for on a monthly basis, a quarterly basis, a yearly basis. Right. Right. Uh, but there's, there's also, um, a degree and a level of peace that comes within setting goals for a five or a 10 year plan, because what happens in every single person's journey is there's always downturns, right? Yeah. There's always a winter, there's seasons in life, right? There's always right. a winter that comes. And if you can be so confident and focused and dialed in on that five year plan, you can always turn back to that and know, okay, maybe what's happening right now sucks. Things are not going how I want them to. It's tough. You're feeling mentally down. You're not motivated. But guess what? That five-year goal, I got time. 
Yeah. I got time to reach that 10 year goal. You and can those goals are awesome, right? Those goals right. are awesome. Those goals excite me. Those goals are going to take care of me and my family and my future. And that's what I'm working for. Too. So it might not happen now. It might not happen next week, next year. But hey, in 10 years, I got time. I'll figure it out. Right. So just tricking your mind into stuff like that helps. I like that because you can pivot, right? You always We're always pivoting in this business. Shifts always. happen. <laughs> things yes. happen. Deals fall through. Stuff like that happens. What I don't like to see is when somebody sets a goal, I'll just go out a year. So I see this a lot and I I it just I have to coach on it a lot. So let's say someone set a goal to do ten million, right? Um and they're not getting there throughout the year. Let's say we're hitting the six month point, seven month point. They're like, I'm never gonna make it. I'm gonna lower my goal. I cannot stand when people yeah, no. lower their yeah, goals. Never. You don't lower your goal. You adjust your activities and you triple and quadruple your activities. If you need to call, if you need to make 10 connections to get one listing, guess what? You got to make 40 connections yep. today. You don't adjust your goal. You adjust your activity. And that's what I'm always coaching people on. And that's how you, at the end of the year, can make those goals you set at the beginning. Yeah. How you treat yourself is everything. If you're, if you're bringing your goals down, you're immediately programming your mind and your subconscious that you're not willing and you're not worthy of that, mm -hmm. right? And if you feel, if your subconscious feels you're not worthy of those goals, you will never hit them, right? right. So, okay, well then maybe we'll try the opposite. When you're not reaching your goals, make them bigger. Right. Make them bigger because maybe what happens when you set your goals bigger and larger is, okay, now you have to change the way, change your approach. You have to change how you're going to get there. Right. And I think that could help people think differently, but yeah, never, ever go down on your goals. Never go down. Just make them bigger. Yeah. So that same person, <laughs> you maybe make your goal 13 or 14. Yes. Though, and if you ended up at yes. 10, then you feel good. Right. Because what do we do? We always beat ourselves up. So you never want to set goals that are crazy. You can't do it. Right. Because what did you do yourself? Oh, I didn't. You probably still did good that year, but you beat yep. yourself up all year. That's not a good way to live, right? So set realistic goals, get your plan, uh, you know, put them in your phone. Like if you went in my phone right now, with the exception because we're filming, I, I have it broken down by the hour up until noon about what I need to accomplish. So I have like a win by noon mentality. So I get all my activities done by noon. So that frees me up for either family time showings or listing appointments but uh, i see a lot of people you know they don't get going till about noon i'm like what have you been doing <laughs> and they're yeah. like they're just kind of getting going um and uh so coaching around that as well for sure and yeah. it comes down to just people's different desires too right like what do you right. what do you want in life and i think people need to become very honest with themselves about that we're in a culture where social media has brainwashed people into thinking this is how you need to be. Yes. This is how you need to act. This is what you need to buy. This is what you need to wear. It's all crap, <laughs> right. right? That's not true. Maybe for that person, if that's yeah. what they want, right? But yeah. people need to start by being honest about what they want in life and what makes them happy. And that's not an answer that you get, right? Like you can't just think about it for 10 minutes. Right. That's a developing, growing answer, right? But but happiness comes from progress. And if you can find a way to always have progress in your life, like you were saying, um, it, that's, that's the solution, I think. Right. So back to 2024, uh, I'm glad 2023's over. It was a, it was, it was a, if I look back on it, I'd probably give it uh, eight out of 10. Do I wish we had more sales? Absolutely. But there was a lot of personal growth. Uh, I watched many of my team members grow and, you know, go from zero deals to, like eight or nine, which is good. Yeah, very people. good. Um, and then we're mixing it up this, you know, we're mixing it up as well because we don't all just have all new people. We have three, three million plus uh, uh, team members as well. Uh, because when I was with Kristen, you know, we would get the people that were doing four and five million and we get them to eight or nine. And then we had people that were doing 16 million and get them to 22. Yep. We had this one guy, um, he, didn't have a database you know you'd be surprised what people don't have when they get here like what do you mean what's a database i was like you don't have a crm or a database this guy literally had boxes of his clients were in boxes Old in his garage <laughs> and he still did like gosh i think he was doing like 22 million at the time and then we worked with him and within three years he went from like 22 million to 32 million and i think i think he's gonna do like 40 million this year. wow so it's fun to, it's interesting to see what people do and don't, more importantly, don't do with their business. 
Um, but that's what that's you know it's fun to look back and watch the growth over the last year. So 2023, eight out of ten. 2024, I'm expecting it to be big again. I think it's going to be similar to what it was like in 2022, 2021, with the interest rates coming back down. Um, in fact, I had that I have a buyer we just got under contract this past weekend on Christmas Eve. Yes, I was working on Christmas Eve to get my clients a Christmas present, a new house. Um, they're they got a VA loan, good credit, really good credit. Their interest rate. Uh, she texted me yesterday. They locked in at 5.8. I haven't heard wow. that in a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Right. So Fed announced they're going to be uh, bringing down interest rates. I mean, they know houses have to move. A lot of people eat when a house sells. Yeah. It's not just a realtor. There's yeah. title companies. There's lenders. There's contractors. You name it. Inspection uh, people. You name it. So I'm, I'm predicting... 2024 will be a similar environment as 2022, meaning buyers are going to come back out, houses are going to come back on the market, um, and that's that's also why I've been advising people, to, you know, buy now because this is what I think is going to happen. You know how it works: more buyers, what happens? The demand goes up, prices go up. I'd rather pay a higher higher interest rate right now and do the refi that's coming up. Then pay the thirty to sixty thousand over, which I think is probably going to happen again in twenty twenty four. What do you think? Yeah, I agree, and I think a lot of people too are so anxious and they're just waiting for the right time. And it's really now it's it's always the right time, right? If, right. If it's moving forward and going to put you guys in a different position, it's always the right time to buy. And uh, you know, I've worked when I was in the mortgage business and you can contest this too, we help a lot of people who have been renting their entire lives and who have not owned anything in their entire lives. And um, it's like, well, how many times have you said it's, uh, you're waiting for the right time? What is it going to be? And I think that what's going to happen over the next, you know, 10 to, to 30 years is these very large institutions are buying up the residential housing in America, right? Because they're realizing that that's where a lot of the money is going. But there's also an opportunity for us as individuals on an individual level to get and start buying assets and buying real estate and take advantage of that wealth, take advantage of that uh, that American dream, right? Correct. Um, but uh, no, I, I agree with a lot of what you said. And you mentioned people renting. You know, I, I was talking just yesterday. Um, you know, I we captured leads and I was following up with leads, and she had clicked on a house on Facebook, and she's like, "Oh, I was looking for a rental." I was like how come have you ever thought about buying she's like i don't think i'm i can i was like well tell me some of the reasons you don't think you can and the first thing she says like well first of all i don't have 20 percent down how many people you come across that think they still need 20 percent down to buy a house it's a common misconception it is that's a big misconception i was like well actually you could probably do three percent down uh, there's some programs that do three between three and five percent she's like oh i have that She's like, but my credit's not high enough. I was like, well, what is it? She's like, I think it's a 660. <laughs> I was like, that's high enough. Yeah. I know people that do 620 and higher. You Do you know any yeah. lower than that? I don't know. Sometimes you see 580 out there, uh, a little higher interest rate. But anyway, um, that's our other, um, what we're called to do as well. If we're going to say we're in the business to change lives, help people build wealth, we got to have these conversation with people that are paying 15 and 1800 a month in rent. So if we raised our hand and we want to be in this business, we said, we're going to change lives, right? We said, we're going to help people build wealth. We have to take the time to have this conversation with people who are renting or who don't really understand what it takes to own a house. And to be honest, how easy it can be, right? If they team up with a great lender, they team up with a great realtor, and we get their plan together, they'll be in a house within, you know, 35 to 60 days if they do everything that they're supposed to, right? And and I'm sure, I hate to say it, but I'm sure a lot of people, once they heard, oh, you know what, I just want a rental. They're like, oh, sorry, I don't do that and hang up, right? That's probably the natural tendency because we're here to sell houses, right? But I was like, no, I was like, let me dig a little bit further into this person that I right. never met in my life, never seen him in person. She she was like, who is this? You know, she didn't know who I was. 
Um, but we ended up having a great conversation and a plan to help her get home ownership. She may have rented for the rest of her life. I don't right. know what would have happened because she was she's in her thirties. She has kids, single mother, right? And I was like, gosh, I need to help this woman with her life. I'm going to take the time to at least have a conversation with her and up and educate her on how easy it is for home ownership and how that can change her the trajectory of her wealth and her family. So if she doesn't know to buy a house, guess who else isn't going to know? Her kids. Yep. And they're going to rent their whole life. Yep. Right? So it it that's one of the biggest things for me in this business is to, you know, change lives and be, just be in a position. When you look back on life, who did you help? Right? That's a big motivation for me. Let's talk about, I know you go to a lot of events, right? So you go to events and you're always growing. You're always being mentored. You're going and, and just learning. What are What is one of the last things you went to that was like, wow, I really learned something. And what did you take back? What was like your takeaway from it that people should hear? The last event that I attended, it was a Tony Robbins event. And it was my first Tony Robbins event. Okay. Uh, Tony's been around for 40 years. Everybody knows the name. He's right. that self-help motivational guru. And um, I've never been to one of his events, but I've been following him for a while. So I attended this event down in Dallas and... Um, it was called Unleash the Power Within. And the whole point was it was to kind of tap into yourself to get anything you could possibly want to dream of. And my biggest takeaway from Tony at that event was, uh, was the ability to learn and to practice changing your state. And what I mean by that is we all have different states uh, that we live in. Mm -hmm. They're emotions, right? Happiness, excited, angry, sad, like uh, depressed. These are all different states. And every time we're in that different state, our brain processes decisions and makes different decisions in different ways, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is if you can control those different um, states in your mind and your body, you can control how you're going to make decisions and how you're going to feel. Right. So it starts with understanding the emotions and then knowing what triggers you can create for yourself to say, okay, if I'm stressed out right now, I'm stressed out. Feel it. Feel that emotion. Understand it. Okay. What's not going to happen in a stressed out uh, environment, right? You're not going to get the best outcome that you can produce as an individual. So it's learning and studying how you can change your states uh, to make yourself more efficient and uh, just to kind of live that that happier life. Mm -hmm. Because there, all these emotions, we're all going to feel these things, right? It, right? They're normal. It's a normal thing. But it's how you handle it is what can set yourself apart from uh, your you know your competition and yourself, and it can just help you live a better life. So that was a very uh, big takeaway for myself, and I started uh, implementing that into my business when there's problems that come up, okay, mm -hmm. how do I feel? I'm angry, I'm pissed off, right, and frustrated. So would you say he said he allowed you to have that feeling, identify that you're having it, and then roll with it for a little bit, or what was yeah. the- Yeah, yeah, okay. he's like, okay, if you spend, pick a time, right? Mm -hmm. so pick five minutes, take five minutes, be pissed off, <laughs> okay. be mad, let it out, right? Said the but timer. after those five minutes, <laughs> just know, like, you have to tell yourself, listen, it's, there's no benefit in that. There's no benefit in me being pissed off anymore. I need to get back into a, a state of, of motivation and, and joy. And what he does is interesting. It's a whole process. It takes a little bit of time, but he goes through some of the, the standard emotions and feelings that we have and he'll tie it to a memory, right? So he'll say, okay, I want you to close your eyes and think about a happy moment that you've had in your past, mm -hmm. no matter what it is. If it's with family, with a friend, close your eyes and deeply think about a happy moment that you ha you've had, okay? Feel what it was like to be in that happy moment. What did you see in that happy moment? moment? Mm -hmm. What did you feel? And what he does is he gets you to really hone in on these moments in your life uh, that you've had these different feelings. So when I become angry and upset, I can close my eyes for a minute and just go back to that moment of happiness and joy. And it brings you happiness and joy. And that's a way to tell your mind to, to shift that state right. to put you back in the, where you need to be. So I found that very valuable and I've, I've, I've been doing it now for a few months and it's, it's awesome. That's good. I it's like mind control for yourself. <laughs> it's funny <laughs> that I was kind of laughing cause I was imagining myself being upset and then trying to do that. But then I, my inner voice just said, get out of here to that good picture. <laughs> like I didn't want to see the good picture. Did you have the fight? To, well, to let that, that means good memory... That, that good memory isn't good enough. You find a better that one. good enough. Find a better one. That overpowers... 
got it. Find a memory that makes you so happy and so fulfilled that it's worth all the shit that you had to go through. Got it. Because th that'll overpower any That's negative right. thought. All right. So have. I didn't have the best. I didn't have my best po powerful memory to right. overcome that. <laughs> Yep. That's good. <laughs> as, you know, as a business owner, there's a lot of frustration. Every so day. I imagine it's a can... roller coaster. We're juggling bowling balls. Right. <laughs> Tony Robbins, you know, obviously you say he's been around a long time and he has. Um, he's actually speaking at a KW event coming up okay. in February. It's awesome. Yeah. That should be good. So if Gary Keller uh, likes him enough to have him as a keynote speaker, and you said it was very beneficial. I, I encourage people to see what he's doing. We do the um, there's a personality test that he does, um, that I'll have a disc assessment, yep. And then I have people that are going to join my team do the Tony Robbins disc assessment, yeah, so I can, good. so I can, um, you know, know more about the people that want to join my team, and even more importantly, how to coach them better. So. Yeah, and no, that'll be what? When is that event? It's end of February. It's family reunion. It's in Vegas this year. I think it's the twenty eighth. Don't quote me. Okay. Um, I can't be there, or else I would. I, I have a missions trip in Argentina. Okay. At that time, so that won out over family reunion. But um, anybody can go. You don't event. have to be part of Keller Williams to go. There's a lot of people that go to those. Yeah. Keller Williams events, Mega Camp. Uh, family reunion and they grow from it whether they're in real estate or not or whether with kw or not one thing i'm sure he'll touch on especially in front of an audience geared towards like business owners and real estate is the what, what he prides himself on is when he he owns like hundreds of companies it's crazy and he goes every time he buys a company he'll go into the company and the only thing he'll focus on is the minds of the leaders okay he doesn't go in he doesn't deal with operate he doesn't do any of that stuff right. he'll go in and he'll work on the minds um, of, of the leaders. And every time he does that, the company is just skyrocket, right? Because it all starts in people's heads. Did he mention that if, that there's people he can't work with their minds and he has turnover? Or he do you feel like he's able to coach their mindset and keep most of the same people that were there? He has some very interesting case studies that uh, uh, and research projects that have been done on him. Um, from very large national institutions that he he covers and that are aligned. Uh, but that's a, that's a good question. Um, I think that if you get, I think as humans, we're all, this, we're all the same in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. right? There's just more obstacles that some can have to get to that base human nature. Right. So I think it just becomes a matter of, okay, how 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 do you get through all those obstacles to tap in and bring out that, that just human in, in a person? But that's a good question. And that comes down to the coach in you, so. Correct, yeah. He's a master <laughs> level coach, so I'm sure he does well. 40 years, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Takes right. some time. Exactly. I don't want to let you go without talking a bit about the commercial business, because uh, commercial real estate, because I would think 90-some percent of realtors don't deal with it and don't mo know much about it, but yet 100% of them are somewhat interested and if given the right opportunity, they, they would invest or be part of it somehow. So how did you shift to dealing with commercial real estate to begin with? Cause you, you were a lender, you had a mortgage business, right? And then all of a sudden you, I saw you taking the steps to set yourself up to build wealth through commercial real estate. So what was like your, what started that for you? There's many different paths that you can go down in real estate to build that wealth. And I, I actually didn't get started in with buying single families or apartments or nothing like that. I, an opportunity came up with a couple partners of mine and mm -hmm. we had an opportunity to buy a, a commercial building, three offices. So uh, that's kind of how that, how I started down that path. Uh, I mean, and then from that point, obviously I already had that snowball rolling. So I just pushed it harder. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but looking back, it's commercial, commercial real estate is a very good way to build long-term um, wealth, right? But it's, is, it has a lot more risk. It, it can have a lot more risk sure. and it's, it's hard. It's a lot harder to do and get started. Right. So when I like to talk about that, I, yeah, that's what I'm doing and we could talk a ton about it, but I think to help the most people, especially with an audience that we're talking about, it's like, okay, how do people get started with the residential investing? 
Okay. okay. And I think that what a lot of people freeze up and they don't do anything is because they feel like they're stuck or they feel like what they're doing right now is preventing them from actually investing in real estate, which we know is not the case, but they have those mental blocks, mm -hmm. right? And I think that a lot of people see these investors that are online who they're doing all this crazy stuff and they're right. buying and they're selling, they're buying, and they become the, they're less motivated to do it because they feel like, okay, well, he's doing that. This is who he is. This is what he does. I'm not that person. I don't do that. I can't do it. But that's not the case, right? And if you can put together an action step plan that started at your home, okay, here, here's my job, here's my bills, here's my responsibility, here's my family I have to take care of. Okay, what extra cash do we have? What can we cut away? Like the simplest stuff, like finance 101. Right. People need to do finance 101, okay? Look within, look in the budget and the income that you currently have and find out where you can pull some cash and start saving money there, right? Simplest way to start, okay? Take some time. It doesn't matter if it's six months, 12 months, a year, three, four, five years. If it takes you that long to save up for your first property, who cares, right? right. It's better do than, it. than doing nothing. And um, as, as I see a lot of people who do that and then they start buying, they buy their first rental property, right? And then they, they, get, they get their feet wet in it. They experience what it's actually like. They realize that investing in real estate is not passive. Right. It's not passive. People who say it's passive are just they're lying to you. Right. Yeah. There's problems that you have to do. It's a business. You have yeah. to run it like a, like yeah. a business. Right. Right. And um, so go in with that expectation. But when people do that first deal, that gets them excited and that that in, you know puts a bunch of confidence in them. And that really helps people roll their own snowballs. Um, but there's always opportunities that come up. Um, that you know can pull you into different directions. There's obviously there's residential, there's commercial, mm -hmm. there's new development, there's land development. There's all different types of real estate, mm -hmm. but the most uh, transacted is 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 residential because it's right. the largest sector in in the country. Uh, and you can get in with programs like you were talking about. There's ways that you can get into these properties with little to, to no money down in certain ways. Correct. And it's you can be creative too, right? Now a lot of people, the common thing is to have like seller finance. Okay, the seller wants a higher price, but the market it really isn't like uh, uh, willing to pay that. So what as an investor you can do is you can go into the property. I'll give you the higher price, but you seller finance and carry that mortgage for me at X interest rate that works for the numbers, right? So there's all different types of ways to get creative. It just comes down to um, not only not only trusting yourself enough that you can do it, mm -hmm. but also believing yourself to start getting the education. Especially right now, if you have a cell phone, any piece of information you need to invest in real estate is free online. Right. You don't even have to go to Barnes and Nobles and buy a ten dollar book anywhere if you don't want to. I recommend doing that. <laughs> uh, a very good one yeah. to get started is Rich Dad Poor Dad. That's a very good one. Yeah. Um, like baseline. Everybody, every real estate investor's read it. Yeah. Read it. Try it. Right. If you're not in real estate, give that one a shot. But there's education everywhere. You just have to do it and pick up a phone and call somebody like Kevin. Like, yeah. hey. Here's what I got. Be open, right? He's no, there's no judgment, right? In a world like this, like here's what I got. Here's what I'm trying to do. Help me, and you'll be surprised by just asking the questions and making the call. How willing people are to help you? Yeah, absolutely. And you're right. It's getting that first one underneath your belt gives you the motivation. You're like, all right, I did it. I remember when I bought my first one, and I think I had my next one within a, a month after. Yeah, um, I was like, oh gosh, this is great, and then. <laughs> It changes your, I remember, gosh, I wasn't even a licensed realtor at the time when I bought those properties. Mm -hmm. I was still working in restaurants. And it, I remember the feeling of, it felt like I had an accomplishment. It, I just, there, were, there was a high to it. And I can, I, I'm thinking of it now, I'm reflecting back on it. I can feel what I felt. And I, I can remember playing like Monopoly with my family. And I'm like, this is what I want to do yep. in real life. Yep. Uh, but you have to, you know, get a plan and just get that first one under your belt. We talked about this on a podcast a couple episodes ago where now you can get two family homes for 5% down. Right. There's no reason you shouldn't be doing that. Right. Um, I, any first time home buyer, I love to see them buy that two family first, live there for a while, collect rent, and then do it again and do it again and do it again. And when you get married, then you can stop doing it right but if i was if i was to go back and be 20 year old kevin i would be doing that every two years moving 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 plus buying other assets along the way yes yeah a lot of people they just it's all the excuses it's but then this would happen but then that would happen like 
I heard him stop oh. using the word but. Like I, just like, take that out of your vocabulary yeah. and start saying, and then I will, right? Yeah. Instead of, but what if the tenant destroys the kitchen? Correct. Say, well, if the tenant destroys and when they destroy the kitchen, I will then replace it, which may increase the value of the property. Like, like stop using the word but and stop making up excuses and just try it. <laughs> right. Just and you, I remember when I was buying them and it's more family members, they're like, they said everything you just said. Yeah. Right. And they, yeah. they get you scared. And they, some people, just be honest, not everybody has that entrepreneurial spirit. Right. And if they don't, you got to not listen. Right. If we listen to all the negative voices out there and the people that don't have the mindset to take, it, it's a risk. Right. It's a risk. But the risk, you, real estate always wins. Are you familiar with Ed Milet? I've heard the name, but I haven't heard tell me more so he's a he's another speaker uh he's ran multiple and exited multiple uh very large businesses but one of his very powerful powerful speeches that i heard in person and he talks about all the time look him up you'll find this is he goes be the one like be the one in your family that can change the course of right. your name and your generation and kind of what you were just saying is a lot of times family and friends who have the most influence on you it's not their fault, but they've just never done it. They were never that one to break out of their 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 current path and those current um, belief systems, right? So become that one in your family to take that step out and and change it, right? And yeah. what does that mean? That means going where it's not comfortable, going where people are not going to believe in you, not because they don't want to believe in you, right? Your family and friends love you. It's not that they don't believe in you. They just don't believe in what you're trying to do because they don't know it, right? It's not, and don't take it so personally all the time. Right. That's a thing. That's a big thing people struggle with. It's not about you. It's right. not about you. It's about they haven't done it. They don't know what it feels like. It's scared. It's they're scared of it themselves, and they don't want you to get hurt because they love you. Right. It's not that they don't believe in you. I, that's a great point. And and those same people that tell you that they're the ones that had jobs all their life. Yep. Right. What yep. they? I don't know about you, but when I was uh, going go to college, get yep. a job. Yep. Go to college, get a job, and I did that. And then about eight years ago, I don't want to do that anymore. Yep. I want to create a business, Yep. not work for somebody. You're the one in your family. I'm the one. It's a good feeling, isn't it? It is a good feeling. It's going to last generations. Because, you know, my daughter, it's funny, even when she was like two or three years old, she'd come around with me like showing properties and I'd have to take her sometimes to open houses and she'd yep. be like, daddy, are we going to an open house or a showing? Like she would know what, <laughs> yeah. she would know the different terms. Yeah. Um, and even little Stefan now, he's like, he loves to go show houses and it's good, especially when there's other little kids. Yeah. Cause he'll take the kids and play in the living room with yeah. the kids. And I'm able to show the parents the house. It's a family <laughs> business. Yeah. So I love that. You don't have to teach it. Cause what if I said, child i'm going to teach you about real estate what are they going to do at that age they're going to shut you out yeah right yeah. but if you bring them along and uh and get them involved they don't know what you're right. secretly it's doing in their subconscious <laughs> yeah behind yeah. the scenes they're pre-programming <laughs> yeah i think now more than ever especially the way the world's going and way you know jobs are going and technology i think it's more important now than ever to be the one and find your business because let's face it, there's going to be people losing jobs from technology. Yeah. Right. It's happening. It's happening and it's just going to get worse. So be the one and be great at the one thing you want to do. A lot of jobs are, yeah, a lot of people are losing their jobs. And um, I think a lot of the, the, the term financially free and becoming financially free. Um, I think a lot of people associate that with massive wealth, right. massive amounts of money. Right. Because that's just a lot of what social media has told us. But right. I think what being financially free actually means is just being able to survive within your own resources. Correct. Okay. And how long, right? And in an economy that's, you know, like you just said, it's important to find out how to create an environment for you and your family where you can survive on your own resources right. without being beholden to a company or a, a job, something like that. Right. Yeah, you don't have financial free. We just did this uh, about two weeks ago with the team. What's your financial freedom number? And everybody's is going to be different. It doesn't yep. have to be a gazillion dollars. Right. In fact, break it down. What do you want to bring in passively per month that will support the lifestyle that you want? And, you know, some people may say 40000 You know, yep. I think you could 
get have a nice living if you had all your assets paid off if you had between eight and twelve thousand dollars coming in a month that could do a fund a lot of things in retirement plus you're gonna have all the other stuff that's not just that i'm gonna go on record to say it's not just that but if you had if you've been investing in your iras over the years which you should be doing a lot of realtors aren't doing it you should fully max out your ira every year by the time you turn 65, if you got those IRAs, you got, let's say, six to 10 doors paying you rent, you're going to have a good life. Yeah. And you just have to start doing it now. So the financial number is different for everybody. For sure. And I just had lunch with a really, really smart businessman a few weeks ago. And he was kind of, we sat there for a few hours and he was talking to me and giving me advice and kind of just giving me some mentorship advice and pieces. And mm -hmm. one of the things he said was like, build your city, right? Think about your, 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 your life is you're building a city and each building you put in your city is a different stream, right? Mm -hmm. You have all your different buildings. You have uh, wealth, finances, relationships, uh, pleasures, right? Stuff like that. But then also in the city, you need you need to diversify. Like you said, you need to have a little savings account. You need to put stuff in retirement. You need to have passive income right. from properties. You need to have active income. Like, like think of it as a city and what do you want to build? How big do you want it to be happy? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And uh, I, 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 drew it, I drew it out once and I'm like, okay, kind of cool to see. Okay, what do, I want to, what do I want to build? What's big? What's a tall building? What needs to get raised? Like, right. It's just looking at things a little differently. One of my favorite things Gary Keller says, he says, you can be anywhere you want in five years. Yeah. And yep. I agree with Love that, that 100%. Have Love you that. heard that before? Yes. Yeah. You can be anywhere you want in five years, but you're not going to wake up. If you don't have a plan and you don't do the stuff you talked about earlier, a vision board, GPS, things yep. like that, you're not going to wake You're in a snap. It's going to be five years and you're not going to be where you want to be. Yep. So you got to show up every day, be purposeful and make your goals happen. I love it. All right, Logan, we covered a lot today. Yes, we did. It was awesome to see you again. It's been way too long. I know we're going to go get our Indian food fix after this. Are we still down for some chicken tikka masala? After we're down. This? Yes. <laughs> this is, we share a lot of the same thoughts. You know, we have, we all, we both have big goals um, and we want to change lives of people around us. So uh, the goal of this was to help people who are listening, you know, set goals for themselves and have a life by design. Right. Um, so I just appreciate you taking the time and coming down. It's been good to catch up with you again. Is there anything you want, one last thought you want to leave the crowd with to um, kind of get them motivated for 2024? Or if anybody wants to reach you, how should they reach you? I love the simplest thing you just said. Live a life by design. Mm -hmm. That's all. all Thank right. you for having me, Kevin. <laughs> all right. <laughs> good seeing you. Till next time. Til we'll next have time. you back again. I look forward to it. Oh, I think we should get together about maybe the six month mark of the year. Okay. And we'll see if what we talked about came to fruition. Yep. We'll see if we're ahead of our goals, which I plan to be. And then we'll we'll do a recap and we'll we'll do a show about the second half of the year. Love it. Let's do it. All right. Sounds good. Thank Thanks you again. Right.